What's up, guys? Legendary Talks, um, episode 119. We have uh, two amazing people on tonight. I'm very excited. What's up, Claudine? Very on time. Um, we have two amazing guests. I can't wait to chat with them. They've just joined right on time. I'm pretty sure it's their first IG Live. So let me... Um, hold on, I want to pin. And then... Except great, they're right on time. Uh, B and Julio, I'm gonna chat with them in a moment. Legendary, <gasps> what's up? Hi, uh, no, because I think it's too like this. This, can you see that we are all the people neophyte of this? <laughs> Well, no, uh, no, you my brother. First of all, what's up? What? Wait, you're coming and going. Everybody turn off their... Uh... I'm not connected. Your Wi-Fi. Connected. No, I'm not. Okay. I don't have your new Wi-Fi. Okay, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Eagle, eagle 1 to Eagle 2. Put the volume up there. Check <laughs> 1 to <laughs> Sometimes you break out, but you can hear us. Hi, Siobhan. Damon, say hi to Siobhan. She's amazing DJ. Do you know her? No. no. She's awesome. What's our drinking word? Uh, uh, Andy Cohen. Whiskey. Never, never empty. <laughs> um, what, what am I drinking? Uh, what are you drinking? Pandemic. Uh, Coronavirus. Pandemic. Plandemic is the word. Japanese whiskey. No, honey, it, it, oh, you, you was asking what is the drinking word. So every time there is a word said, we drink. That was the thing. Yeah, oh, so you I'm have to old. be like, Amore, can you move? Pandemic is killing me. Right. Okay, guys. Why are you guys leaving? Guys. What? So we're doing an Instagram Live. It's Legendary Talks. This is my 119th episode. Um, we interview people that um, have been very important to culture in New York City. So I thought that you would be great people to um, interview. Uh, I've done so many, yeah, I've done Lisa Cooper, Stretch Armstrong, you know, um, D-Nice, you know, all these amazing people. And I thought that you guys were great. Thank you. I want to ask you questions. Uh, describe yourselves to me as if I didn't know you. <laughs> you answer that. Oh my God. Uh, we're just... They might need help. We're just, we're just, I don't know. We are, describe yourself if you don't know. We are, I'm, I'm Roman and I met my husband in 92 and we've been married. I don't think since... that's what he's asking. Oh, okay. I don't know. Then translate. Uh, describe. Uh... I am really shy. I love long walks on the beach. <laughs> he... She feeds fucking right. pigeons, bro. She feeds pigeons. I she love feeds to feed pigeons. birds. Don't throw shade. Um, just insane people. Yeah. With the people, people, crazy people. Opened oh. Il Bugato in the nineties, and then we have a peanut gallery here, by uh, the way. El Posto. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. He's talking. I miss you. <laughs> Robbie Misha is there. So I, on the Instagram. Um, you know I'll, to talk. I, you guys I can't hear it. What makes you guys are what makes New York you guys have always been um, you know, made New York uh, what it is. You guys are very important to New York. Very real. Um, you know, very to real. But that is very nice, but we cannot say it about ourselves. No, I know. I mean we, we just uh, basically from people that loved going, I'm sorry? You guys have made New York what it is, you mean? No, 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 no. We're just part of, you know, a collective of people that have done things in New York, whatever, art, food, parties, clubs, and we worked really hard and then partook of it and continue to sometimes partake with a mask, of course. To partook. Partook, partook. Uh, listen, I've been, I've been speaking, I'm sorry, I'm high. <laughs> She's well, yes. you're from um you're from new york right born and raised in manhattan so i am kind of you know moderately mildly obsessed with new york in the 80s describe new york in the 80s how was it uh crack um <laughs> uh hook is on 42nd street i went to high school in hell's kitchen and i remember in 19 maybe it was 79 
but coming up the train station, got off at the wrong stop, and this woman's like, hey, baby, how you doing? I'm like, me? It's 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to school. She's yeah. like, you want to go out on a date? And then I went to the high school. I went to Park West High School, and I was like, guys, I just, I'm, I'm a high school guy now. Women are trying to pick me up. Exactly, exactly. And they were like, um, it was either a hooker or a transvestite. And I was like, <laughs> I don't understand why. I was so puritanical. And then it all went downhill. So the 80s were insane. There was a lot of drugs. There was a lot of, you know, prostitution, violence, graffiti. But it was so cool because there were so many different art forms that were coming up in New York City. Yeah. You know, uh, the graffiti crews, the, the break dancers, the, the DJs. And, and growing up in my neighborhood, you know, some of those guys gravitated towards clubs. Uh, Hex Hector, perfect example. He's from Uptown. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other people that right now I can't remember, but they partook of whatever going on Uptown. They moved downtown or started doing their thing downtown. There were know? awesome clubs in the 80s. Limelight opened in the 80s. I like to describe um, New York. I wasn't around during that time, but I, you know, in my head, I say it was very dangerous, desperate, and amazing, and really creative. Those, mm -hmm. you know. For sure. Yeah. Um, so wait, B, you're See? from you're from London, obviously, right? <laughs> I am uh, from totally Oxford. <laughs> so you were born. Are you Australian? What part of Italy? Rome, Roma. Okay. So Romana. What, what was it like growing up in Italy during that time? It was awesome, the 80s. Yeah. It was amazing. We had this really uh, cool party at the government. Everybody was partying. There was a lot of money. Berlusconi, everybody, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was awesome. What, um, what are some of the influences you think that you got from Italy that you took with you to New York? Uh, good food, good ingredients, okay. and yeah. simple food. That's it. Um, when did you move to New York, B? In 89, January 1st of 1989, after spending New Year's Eve in Madrid, I got to the airport with like mascara running. I smelled like whiskey. I don't know how they let me in, in America, but I got in. Why did you move to New York? Why? Because I got offered a job in a little PR firm. Oh, wow. uh, that had uh, uh, Italian clients and yep. French. And so I kind of was, I wanted to get away from Italy and I moved because of that. But then after a couple of years, I met this legend. Got it. And that's it. And I never left. I don't leave New York because Julio is here. Wait, so B, that, I always say first year in New York for people that move here, it's so defining. What was that first year like for you in New York? It was awesome. And you know, you go out every night and it's like, and you never eat home and you, you're poor, but you don't care. Yes. You do everything. It's awesome. Yeah. The first year you don't sleep. It's like you never, it's, and I don't know the, the air in New York, at least back then, it was kind of thin. It's like you, you didn't need to sleep. Yeah. I Pollution. It's okay. Uh, Work with me. How did you guys meet? At Lucky Strike at four o'clock in the morning. Tell me the story. What's the story? You remember Lucky Strike? Of course. Right? Yeah. What was the name of the club on Canal and West Broadway? Uh, New Music Cafe or Shine? Shine. Yeah, sure. yeah. I told you it was like, it's called Canal. No, it's not called Canal. It was called Shine. What, um, how did you guys meet though? So that I can remember. Um, I was with uh, a couple of my friends from uptown. And uh, I think it was Wednesday night or Thursday night. It was Thursday. Thursday night. Uh, they, they always had a DJ playing. And uh, we went down there, figured to have a couple drinks, hang out. And I see this girl in this uh, long black leather skirt dancing by herself. And I was like, oh, wow. I go up to her. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And... Uh, I compliment her on her tan. I was like, hey, where'd you purchase that? That was my line for the evening. Can it you was really, it was working for me. It worked. It's like, miss, where did you purchase your tan? I was like, I beg your pardon. She's like, I just got back from Jamaica. So, okay. of course, being the dirty old man that I am, I had like a half ounce of weed in my pocket. I was like, you want to smoke a joint? No, you said, if you come with me to save the robot, yes. I'll give you some weed. That's I didn't give you, we were going to smoke weed. I wasn't going to give you any weed shit. 
Um, um, but uh, yeah, we went, <laughs> went, to, like, went to went to save the robots, and uh, I drove her home, and we just laughed all night long, or all morning long at that point. Yeah, drove her to work. Morning. The rest is history. Well, you guys have been together my whole New York life. You guys have been yes. together. So, you know, there's very few couples that I know that I Ciao, Max. Um, what do you guys think is the, sec the secret to your success? Or why do you think your relationship has remained successful for these three decades at this point? Trust, love, love. And crack inside the food. Crack inside the food. Farm to table from the dealer across the street. So you're basically telling me you're not giving me Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> Julio, what's the first club you ever went to? What's the first what? Club. Oh, man. The first club I ever went to, I think, was uh, China Club. And Probably with Ian, who was my roommate. I'm not sure if you remember of Ian. Course they remember. Of course I remember. Of course I remember. And, uh, and he was Mr. Club. I mean, this dude was like my idol. He was going out every freaking night. And then slowly but surely, I started, I got fired. So I had a lot of free time on my hands. I had money from a 401k to live off. So I started hanging out with him and going out every night, too. So it's all Ian's fault and China Club. Um, and B, what was your first club? Listen, I was here in 1983. Then I went back to Italy. And back then, there was still Studio 54. There was Palladium. There was Danceteria. Wow. And there was Area in Tribeca. That was awesome. Oh my gosh. I didn't go to any of those and I'm, I'm obsessed with well, all Well, honey, them. no, because you're young. I didn't go to any of those and I'm, I kind of studied them all. Well, okay, so out, during that time, what was your, what, which club kind of like really rocked your world? We or... really loved Area. That what? was all the way down here and it was like no man's land. So, you know, you live on the Upper East Side because you're this girl from Rome and it's safe to live there. And then you come down here and you see, you know, Canal Street. It yes, was... the bank. I remember the bank. Really weird. And uh, and area was this club that you walk in and there was this huge, really long corridor. And there were windows in every, like ever so often. And inside there was all live installation, like a caveman, a live person caveman inside one window, a woman with a snake in another window. Then there was a pool full of sand with people in bikinis, sunbathing. And then there was water, a little like um, water feature that would go like from the room in the bar all the way to the other room. It was amazing. There was everybody from everywhere out of the bar of Manhattan, fabulous Valentin. Do I have to shut up? You're kidding me. Should go on and on. Oh, okay, but it was awesome. And there was this club called Heartbreakers that was on like almost across the street from uh, SOBs and it was a pizzeria. And that night they would just move the tables and they would play music like from the 50s, 60s, 70s until the 80s. And I remember uh, Jerulitis being there, Superman. What was his name? The guy that did Superman. Uh, Christopher Reeve. Yeah, Christopher Reeve, uh, you know, Mick Jagger. You would be there, you know, this little Roman girl with all these people. It was so awesome. That's amazing. Like super enthusiastic. Damon, we were badass. We would go out all the time. Still old. I know. Wait, wait so, um, okay, so how did the legendary Il Bagaccio come about? I don't know. I was I obsessed with feeding you. people. I was obsessed with feeding people. We always had people at home. And we were like, oh my God, everybody was saying, you need to open a restaurant. You need to open a restaurant. And so thanks to Julio, we opened it, we managed it, and everybody, because, you know, we opened in the East Village in 1990. We started working in 94, and it was really the Wild West Alphabet City. But we liked that it was there. We liked that it was far away from everywhere. Yeah. And I just wanted to cook, and so Julio came, and really he built it, and everybody would make fun of us, thinking that we would fail. And no, they didn't make fun of us thinking we would fail. They just thought we, it was going to be a drug spot. And we we're like, no, nah, it's going to be an Italian restaurant. Yeah. And um, I remember her crying and like, oh, my God, nobody's going to come here. What yeah, but like, oh, my God, what did we do? And I just kept telling her, you know, the way you cook, people are going to come. So don't worry about yep. it. Yeah. Well, and look yeah. at these words. So that doesn't watch. The legendary Il Bugato was on second between first and A, right? A and B. A and B, and it was 
you know, one of the coolest restaurants New York has, in my era, has ever seen. And it would be, it was so understated in a great way. You know, Bobito would be spinning. Yep. At this table, you know, the locals would be at this table. It was never um, pompous or or fancy, you know, in, in its, uh, I guess, the way it was set up. But that's what made it so great and so cool. Yeah understated and then you were guys were always making the food and the food was like would melt in your mouth so it was like this amazing food that was really just about new york and the food it wasn't about other things that new york is about in a great way you know it was yeah like what it is and as a result i mean it was debbie mazar and like all these people would always be there but it was so understated in, in the best way you mean because it, you, it was right? supposed to be like that right yeah how do you guys describe it well, we never made a big deal. We always treated everybody the yep. same, stars and non-stars. And they loved it because they would come there and nobody would kiss anybody's ass. Yep. And everybody was always super nice. And, you know, my girlfriend, I, Zoe, my Annalisa Milella, always said, "Be you know, I love what is going to happen to this restaurant because you're married to Julio. So it's never going to be a den of Italian expats or, you know, Euro trash. Yep. So we always had the people from uptown, the graffiti artists, yep. the, and then, you know, everybody loves Zulio. So, so everybody would come just to, you know, talk to him and out with him. And everybody, especially stars, always loved that it was a place where they could be themselves. I agree with you. Yeah, it was like... We really, never made a big deal. It was such a diverse interesting place and are you, you first of all you both hosted the place every time i came you'd be like do you know this person do you know this person you guys both were hosting it the whole time so it's almost like in a way kind of like a party but it was a sit-down restaurant no it you know, was a party exactly was, was yeah. you party. totally got it i mean yeah. so many people would go sometimes from table to table um the the thing that's really that Oops. i guess shows how we just don't have a clue and everyone that Quit. Like yourself and, and whatnot that would... What do you want me to do? Hold it? Nothing. I want to make this stay up on oh, its own. All right. You know, people like yourselves and, and people working in the industry, living downtown, whatever you want to call it, everybody came because, yes, the food was awesome. We wouldn't let you put cheese on your seafood pasta. Um, but we were not shooting for, oh, this is our style. This is what we're going to do. You know, we didn't have a PR person. Yeah. We were just the same people that we would see at night at the restaurant. Maybe later on, we would that see at a club. Deal. You know, um, it, 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 was, it was cool. And, and of course, Babito was one of our first DJs. Where he he learned, was our first DJ. Where, well, where he learned how to become a DJ. But, but, All sure. right. And he also was our employment agency. <laughs> so... You know, he would turn yes, around, he, he would turn around and like, you know, I'd call him and like, oh shit, Bob, I I need a, a DJ for whatever <laughs> whatever night, and basically he was curating all the DJs: Dennis Kane, uh, Ali Escobar, uh, Rich Medina, Rich Medina, uh, 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 Lord Sear. Yeah, um, I, I can go on and on. Cassidy, all these guys came through him and they spinned at the restaurant. Sucio, um, but Sucio. And then if I needed a bartender or coach that girl, he hooked us up with the greatest coach that girl who you had on recently, which is uh, Zuhara. Yes, exactly. I mean, and, and she is to the legend on her own right. And, and family. I love her to death. And, you know, the nights that, I, that she was down, it was always, no matter how busy or how slow it was, Zuhara always had a big grin on her face. True. And, and, and she, was, she was just awesome. But all these people came through Babito. Might have um, even gotten us a waiter or two. And then I love your guys' this infamous Giorgio Armani story. Someone tell that story. Say what? The infamous what? Giorgio Armani story. When he came. Oh, my God. No, that was. So it's not so infamous. So we used to go every Monday at. Um, the Silvano. No. Asia de Cuba. Oh, yeah. Asia Cuba. Every Monday, Asia de Cuba. I would always have the same table, which was the big round table upstairs. Jennifer, if you're watching, shout out to you. So, you know, it was always a party when we were there. We just, you know, we would dance. One night, and remember, I had red hair. One night, um, 
the, the, the general manager would always come to it downtown, called and said, you know, uh, Giorgio Armani was here and he asked, who was your table? It's like, who are these people? And so we told him that you have the restaurant, huh? and so he made a reservation and came to eat at Bagatto. How cute is that? No, but no, there's a, no, there's a better story. It was, in the, after, it was during Fashion Week when New York Fashion Week was real and a big deal, and he know. came, and you guys, uh, either you made him wait, or he was late for his reservation. You guys really? Just, oh, really? Possibly. Oh, it's possible. But there is a better story then. <laughs> <laughs> Damon, I raise you on your story. So this Ugh. skinny person with big lips is at the door and it's like four o'clock, four thirty, and he's like with a thick accent. You know, British can we accent. come and eat here? And we're like, no, it's closed. Exactly. No, but we just wanna eat. No, it's four thirty. We don't open until six. Leaves come somebody comes in, he's like, What happened? I was like, nothing, we're closed. They're like, it's Mick Jagger. <laughs> what <I> <laughs> Sorry, we're closed. We never recognized anybody. What are some other highlights for you guys from Il Bogato? I'm going to tell you another story that is not so nice. So Helen Mirren used to come all the time, and one night she came with Al Pacino. And Al Pacino, at the end of the meal, asked me for espresso with lemon skin, which in Italy I have never seen anywhere in my life. I can assume that maybe back in the days, Maybe they will use the lemon peel to um, kind of disinfect the rim of the espresso cup and the spoon. You know, could be something like that because it is an antibacterial. So I go to the table and I left, you know, we would never hover any fabulous table. And, you know, Dame Mirren was a total regular. So I went and I said, listen, I know who you are. She said no to Scarface. I was like, but I'm sorry, the only twist you're gonna have in this restaurant, and I twist, and I was like, <laughs> of course he never came back. <laughs> that's so no, yes. That's, that's how the place was, it's like, you know, I remember sitting next to De Niro one night, and you know, like, it's like every time you go there, but it wasn't about that, it was about being real, and the mixture of different people, and it was, you know, it, it's, it is, it is made New York what New York was at that time, you know what I mean? Um, say the John Mayer story. That's a nice no, story. No. Okay. Okay. No, but but listen, you know the the thing is that everybody everybody got treated the same. It's true. Yeah. And uh, tough luck. If you if you waited, you waited. If you didn't wait, you didn't wait. Yeah. You know, and it's understood because who the hell are we? We're, it's not like we're telling you, you got to wait an hour because we're we're trying to be really cool. We just didn't have a table. <laughs> but but people people came and and they kept returning and. And that was cool, you know. Uh, that was that was uh, a special place, and we hope that we're sort of continuing in that legacy, if you want to call it that, with the Posto Canto. Yep. Um, and and sometimes I, I mean, you haven't been there, but like, you know, when I see Zui and I see other friends that used to go to Bagato, and they go there, and it's still, you know, we still all have the same vibe. Mm -hmm. We still enjoy it. We're like, oh man, that song that's playing, it's really cool. Because yeah. that was the other thing that was so cool about El Bagato was that I remember walking on the floor, on the floor, of course, and on the floor, no, on the ceiling, but walking. And if I saw people eating their food and bopping their head, I knew they were having a good time. And it right. was a great night. You're right. It was, it was like the DJ was on point, the kitchen was on point, people were having a good time. Yes, this is memorable. Um, so, what's your first memory of me? Uh, first of all, Caschetto. Remember you used to have the haircut, Caschetto? What do you call? All right. You remember your haircut, Damon? Yeah, of course. Caschetto. You're like, you have no idea. Oh my God, how do you call? Um, so I remember seeing this really cute guy with Caschetto. Where were you, Damon? Were you at Envy? No. Were you at Peace? What? Were you at Envy? He doesn't when even I... remember the haircut. So, I'll, okay, I'll tell you my first memory of you. So, I was doing the door. Yes, thank you. Pretty much seven nights a week, every hot club in New York at the time. This is late 90s, maybe early 2000s, late 90s probably. And you came, um, you both came together. I feel like it was just the two of you, maybe about four of you. Then the next night I was doing the door at somewhere else. And then you came, B in particular, you, you guys came together. But B was wearing the same dress she had worn the night before, not knowing she was going to see me. And she said, oh my God. I can't go in. 
I'm wearing the same dress last night. You saw me in the same dress. Possible. That dress. And you went home and changed and came back. And I said, I like that girl. That girl, I yeah. like that. Integrity. That's my <laughs> and I remember another time, too, at the very beginning, we're all at life one night. And for some reason, you guys always had limousines, like weirdos. She would drive car on limousines. You remember you jumped in the limousine? We don't know where that limousine came from. It was your birthday. From. No, no, no. I it, think, when's your birthday? No, no, no. None of that. No. So we, we were at life. And no, we were, but when is your birthday? I'm in our limousine. So I was a little bit behind you guys, maybe like, you know, five minutes behind you guys. And I opened up this limousine and it was Ananda Lewis and Prince. And, she, and I know Ananda Lewis. And she goes, what are you doing? Like getting in our limousine? I thought it was your guy's limousine. I was like, oh my God, that was my other friends. You mean? But, <laughs> my, like memories of you guys. You mean? Damon, but were we never in a limousine again uh, together? Was it Julio's birthday? Was it your birthday? It's Julio's, not mine. No, but my birthday is March 20th. So I guess yours was, somebody says March 14th. Yeah. So I think we somehow wound up all celebrating and going, God, I just remember. We definitely the, went to shout. I, I remember the limousine. I remember that it was your birthday. And I remember we laughed a lot. Yeah, yep. there you go. Those are the key things. I'm not sure if we had pizza afterwards. Um. And then B, during that time, you know, you had such a presence. You had this neon hair and this, the personality that you, you know, were born with, obviously. Shy. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, you just had such a presence. And Danilo was doing your hair at the time. Still, when, he does my hair. Yeah, so I met Danilo through you, the legendary Danilo. And I was like, you know, these people are just cool people. I just liked you guys. And we were friends ever since, so. Ever since. Danilo is awesome. He moved to LA. Now he's more in LA than here. Yeah, he's doing Gwen probably for... He's doing Gwen and yeah. Sia yeah. and Daphne. He's doing... Yeah. Everybody wants him because he's the best. So, Damon, I, I got to tell you something. So, like, yeah. um, so I started going out to clubs and whatnot with Ian. Okay. And, and he Ian, you know, good-looking guy, Mr. Popularity. The doors would open everywhere for him. So it was always good to ride on his coattails. And I was that guy riding on the coattails with him because... I'm not that good looking, rough around the edges, whatever you want to call it. But of all the door people, Kenny, a little bit neck and neck with you, you were always the nicest to me. I, I was in some big shot, I was in celebrity, whatever. I was with my friends or sometimes meeting my friends and you were always a gentleman. And I, and, and I just, and, and even times when I'm driving home late at night, I would see you in front of Gold Bar or wherever. I'm like, yo, that's my man. I got to say hello. Or maybe I would honk and wave at you. Or if I was on my bike, I'd stop. But you were always and continue to be a, a gentleman. Full of swag, always. <laughs> Peanut gallery. Yeah, that's my. Let's talk about El The drinking game name should have been Boobs. <laughs> Describe the new place a little bit. So we opened in Posto Canto in 99 because we wanted it to be a little more, less traditional Italian. And we wanted to put, because we used to serve small plate, we want to put a little more daring stuff like tripe and sea urchin and oxtail back then where not everybody was really eating it. And then now after the pandemic, we had a kind of, we had to change things because we were only doing deliveries. So the plates are a little bigger. The cuisine is a little more, after not working for three months, I was so full of uh, inspiration. Yep. So we've been doing super cute things. We're very excited. We're very happy. We are fucked because, you know, our governor and our mayor are geniuses. Yes. And yeah. Well, you guys are one of the only people I've seen kind of you, first of all, it, it's been so challenging, you know, for our industry in general. It's been terrible. Yes. It's been really yes. kind of steady during this time, which is so remarkable. And I really, my, they're amazing because you guys do seem really enthusiastic about it and really excited about it. You guys are posting every day and, you know, it makes me want to order there just based off of how excited you guys are. So Thank you. Well, well you know, I love food. So. I know you know. You know yes, but, we've been talking. Like, um. what do you guys <laughs> um, um, No, I, but... And I love you. I love you too. Okay. okay. I'm not going to kiss you. Okay, don't kiss They won't tell the truth, but they love each other. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, we're, we've been blessed. Yeah. For the 25 odd years that we're doing this, we've been blessed because we don't have a clue. We still don't have a clue. We're not business people. 
No. We, we, we're not. <laughs> um, but we've been blessed with... No, Max, it sucks. I with, hear you. With, with each other. Uh, great staff. Hi, JP. Great friends. Great customers. Customers that have become friends, that have become family, that have become part of our tribe. And yep. they've helped support us in the months that we were closed. And they continue supporting us now that we've opened, even when it's like 20 something Thank degrees you, outside, they're coming out. And, and we appreciate that. And, and we hope, and we're thankful that they do it with us. And we hope that others are also doing it for other small restaurants and small businesses because everybody's going through a tough moment. You know, yep. we got history with people and whatnot because, you know, with the crazy people that have been on Second Street for this time. Yes. But we also we also gotta like look out for the other small businesses. Yeah, that's you know? true. You have that people really um, are invested in you and love you, so they want to support you as opposed to places. We're super. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. Yes, we are. Thank been... you, Damon. How are things in LA now? Disaster. Completely shut down. Oh, bye. Yeah, completely shut down. We've been shut down for a month. Um, restaurants, one month. I mean, fully shut down. Outdoor, indoor, everything. Um. So let's ask a couple of fun questions. What yes. Are the three best parties you've ever been to, like in history, ever. I mean, I mean, party with promoters. I don't know. For me, Sound Factory was always the best. Right. Everything. Yep. But the parties, like you know, if you would walk in the Jackie VIP. 60. Oh, Jackie 60. But if you would walk into the VIP at life and you would find Tricky DJing and, you know, yeah. and Puffy with his hand inside his sweatpants yeah. and then he would shake people's hands. Gross, gross. It's true. Gross. It's true. Gross. I mean, it was just that party was always... And you were doing the door, right? Which, which club? Life. No, no. I, I did Shine, and I would always go to Life. I worked at Shine and would run to Life after. That's why I would. But do you remember that uh, VIP at Life? It was, you'd walk down those steps, and you'd be like, this is like, you know, yeah. amazing. It's like a music video, a live yes. music Yes. Ian and I were asked to leave there by uh, Stephen Lewis. He personally <laughs> escorted us out. I don't know why. We were just minding our business. Maybe we were smoking and drinking too much. I don't know. I mean, I um, we're, yo, we're the party at Envy on Sundays. <gasps> That, that was, good was too. a good party. Yep, you're right. And, and and the thing is that like that was a party that was a mix: white, black, Hispanic, whatever, uptown, downtown. And I really can't remember a fight breaking out. Maybe some did, but I really can't remember. It was always like a chill vibe. And what about Don Hill? Don Hill was great as well. I loved Envy Sunday. The night that Biggie passed was a Saturday, so that the next yes. Night Day. We went there. They played uh, Biggie, Give Me One More Chance for like maybe three hours straight. It was like a beautiful, beautiful vibe. I never I forget that one. The Sunday, after Biggie yeah. passed. Yeah, that, that, that was a cool call. John Cantor and his crew, they did an awesome job there. I don't know whatever happened to John. He was, he was a regular at Il Bogato because you see, that was the thing. Like the owners, the managers, the bartenders, the barbacks, the DJs. Everyone would come, the strippers. Oh my God, the strippers. Everybody would come to the restaurant and have dinner. And, you know, then you'd see them at a club or a strip club or whatever. It was well, so cool. To your guys' um, credit, you made everybody feel special. Everybody, whether they were Georgia yeah. or, or some of the, you know, like a stripper, they all felt. No, special. listen, yo, on the stripper tip, I remember one time I was with stripper. my brother in law. Two of his friends from Rome, and we went to uh, what was the place? Dan scores. scores. We went to Scores, sitting in the middle table, and there's this tall brunette, and she's like winking at me and gyrating in my direction. I'm like, okay, and they're looking at me like you must know her. I'm like, I don't know. She comes off stage and she's like, Are you Julio from Il Bagato? I'm like, Yeah. Oh my God, I love your lasagna. That's I'll so give you a lap dance for lasagna. I was like, yo, my friends are visiting from Italy. Hook them up. There you go. But this was the beauty of it. Yeah. And of course, you get the, the uptown people or, or some politicians, nice. whatever. But everybody was cool. The Suzanne Barsha. The Suzanne Barsha's. Oh, her parties were awesome. Yeah. yeah just... Oh, my God. Remember the party? Her Halloween parties were oh, the shit. best. Yeah. And At I Palladium. remember. 
at Palladium, and I remember one year, I have the picture, but I don't know if people are going to be able to see it. So my girlfriend and I, we were both chubby, and we decided to go dressed as Patsy and Eddie from Absolutely Fabulous. Nobody knew who we were outside Palladium. We walked into Palladium. Everybody knew That's who we how were. That <laughs> is I was a flasher. Yeah, it was a flasher. Oh my God, her parties were the best. <laughs> Um, great. But you know, I went to great parties in LA too, like apartment in the 80s. Oh, that was so good. Um, who are the three best DJs? Ah. Uh, That's on you, babe. Why? Because you're a little Miss Music. No. Yo, she turned me on to hip hop. She was the president, I mean, per, she was the president yeah. of the Italian or... No, I was not the president ever. Oh, oh the, I don't know what your title was, but... The I Zulu didn't have Nation. a title. We were there all together when they founded it with Africa. Mother. But why is it the story relevant? It's relevant. Okay. So I really love... If I had all the money in the world, I would love Bismarcky to actually DJ one of my parties. No, you tell one. Uh, Johnny Dynell, Daddy Johnny Dynell, and you? I like Hex Hector. There you go. Who? Hex Hector. Hex. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's okay. Good. That's three. But guys, Milo. I mean, there were there's so many good DJ stretch. Three best nights at one of your spots. The three most like you know amazing nights you can remember at, at one of your spots. Allora, definitely one night when uh, the, uh, okay, Christy Turlington and uh, I don't know if she was with Shalom or what, they came in and I had just sat a bunch of friends, people that were waiting for reservations. And so they come in and they say, you know, do you have a table? And I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't have a table. And then I was like, or maybe Ian was telling them that. And I walk and I said, you guys look way too skinny to be needing a table. And so they told me, no, but we're, we need to eat. We need to eat. And so I told them, listen, you guys are really fun. Come back later. But I just sat a bunch of friends and I really didn't have a table for them. And, you know, and Zoldi was there and Matthew was there. And it was just a bunch of really cool people. One, give me two more. Mm, you two say more, one. Two more. Um, when um, I don't know, I, I got this. Uh, I got this little kid that's been coming with his parents, and he's very shy. And uh, he uh, he didn't want to eat whatever it was that his parents ordered for him. But I kind of convinced him into eating, and now he likes it because we started talking about pizza. Um, so I don't know, just little random kid that comes and I convince him to do otherwise. Like with adults, I convince them to drink little kids. I convince them to have a proper bowl of pasta. Yeah. Um, but that's that's one of the ones. No, he wants know. another one, honey. Who? He wants another one. How about when we turn in Posto Canto into who got married? Somebody got married there. Oh, geez. A lot of people got married. Oh, yeah. Tom Sisk. From I used to own Obed. Obed, and uh, I forget the name of the club that was like around the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, the club. From, uh, from Limelight, he got married there right when we opened. Yeah, wow. it was so amazing. There were uh, orchids from the sea in Gorgeous. Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty cool job on that. A great, I never thought about that. That's a great place to get married. I never thought about that. Um, four coolest people in New York City of all time. Oh, what? The coolest people in New York City of all time. Uh, definitely Indian Larry. So if anybody doesn't know, he's like an awesome motorcycle builder, stuntman. And he died in a motorcycle accident. And uh, he had some shops originally in the East Village. And you would always see him on Mondays. I would go to the, the Turkish, Turkish Russian bath. Yep. And, you know, this is back in the... Uh, 95, 96, and he, you know, it, it was like, it was like a cult of people that would go to this thing, and he was one of them, and just was like, you know, really serious, no nonsense, but if you did catch a conversation, it was mad cool. 
And then, of course, there was also Russell Simmons hanging out in the corner, but Indian Larry was was just a man. God rest his soul. He yeah. died in a motorcycle accident. I always love the true New Yorkers, like, you know, Debbie Mazur and Annabella Shorra and who else that would always come and hang out and keep it real. Yeah. Who else of the girls? The Katie Narducci. Uh, um... What's the name that her, her uncle's a judge and he used to come as well? Marissa Tomei. Yeah. They would always live in the neighborhood. And it was really cool because we were all young and kind of lost. But those girls were keeping it real that uh, loved but, the hustling. But the coolest of the coolest of the coolest is Lee Quinone. Yes. And, and you know what? He's neck and neck with Babito. Cause, True that. So, so Lee Quinone came in and I don't get impressed by who you are, who you know, what you have, what you do. Yeah. This guy came in and I used to follow him, you know, doing graffiti on the trains and whatnot. Yep. And he came in and we I, he sat down. He was reviewing us for uh, some magazine. He had like a food column or whatever. Uh, not Mugshot. I can't remember the name of the magazine. Yeah. But I, it, it was like I bonded with this man and to this day he's like a brother. Wow. I, I mean, we, we he's speak, good he's, he's awesome, he's, he did art, when we had the little bar King Size on uh, uh, Essex Street, he did a mural of our dog Kiki, uh, now he's doing something at the restaurant at El Posto Canto, outside, um, just a wonderful person. Amazing. And then the last person, I'm not sure if we, we caught it, but really he's got to be Bob, because I think we have different versions, but like he came in and... I recognized him from the Stretch and Bob show. And again, I'm, I'm not impressed with anybody, but I used to drive a cab and I would stay up till like four or five in the morning listening to the show. Yeah. And, and it was just so cool when he came in and I, I got him a table. And then the next thing you know, even though I haven't, we haven't spoken to him or seen him in a while, it's like, you know, you always got like that little family member that's out there somewhere and stuff. And it's nice to pick up the phone or when you hear from him and make fun of him is there's a lot of making fun with Bob. Yeah, he's, he's another legendary. Yes. 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 Um, okay. So if you could have four people to dinner, uh, living or dead, anybody in the world, who would, you, who would it be? Okay. Shit, you start picking, babe. I would love to see a lot of dead. Definitely Coco Chanel. I want to know why she hates chubby girls so much. Um, I'm gonna pick two and you're gonna pick two, okay? Okay, so okay. my dad is Louis Armstrong. Good. And then one for me... Alive. Alive? That I don't know. No, you say it because I don't know if I could come up with that. Oh, can I say it? No, Prince. He's dead. He can't be dead. He's said dead or alive. True, she's right. Thank you. You're right. One more, Julio. Nino, Nino. You want to uh, have more? <laughs> one more. Um, oh, man, there was somebody that I recently said I would love to have a drink with. Yeah. Um, uh, Louis. Louis who? Primo. No, nah, Louis Primo's mm -hmm. dead. Okay, why are you obsessing with the fact that they're he dead? He said too dead, <laughs> too alive. No, no. It could no. Be, it, they could be dead or alive. It doesn't matter. All right, I'll go with Louis Primo. Okay, good one. Um, Coco Chanel. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. What about you, Damon? Who would you invite? Me? Yeah. Um, Grace Jones. Of course. Uh, who would I invite? Grace Jones. Diana um, von Furstenberg. That Diana. is behind you. Diana. Oh, no, that's Marisa Berenson. Diane Vreeland. Bianca Jagger. First of all, you're asking me and you're telling me. Hello. Can no, I ask I'm you? asking you who is on the pillow. I'm not telling you, honey. Yes, she is. I would do um, Grace Jones, Debbie Mazar, um, <laughs> Carl Lagerfeld, and awesome. Uh, um, uh, Martin Luther King. Those Love are my... it, Santi Damon. But the pillow behind you—it's Bianca Jagger. That's me. No, honey, the other one. This is this. Up, one up. That's Diana Ross. Well, there you go. See, that was like Bianca Jagger, Diane from first, it's Diana Ross. I'd love to have lunch with Diana I Ross. It, I thought it was Jessica Rabbit. 
Jessica okay. Rabbit, yes. A couple more questions. What are you guys inspired? What inspires you right now in life? What inspires what? What inspires us now in life? You know, the hustlers inspire me. I agree. Yeah. Also, yeah. hustlers. Hustlers. Yeah. I nice people. Yeah. Nice people. Uh, what? Nice people. Good. Both great answers. A friend of mine called me in the beginning of the pandemic and she said something really like that stuck with me that only the real and only the authentic will thrive and survive during this time. From her lips to God's ears, honey. Yeah. Um, it will be okay. Then on, when you come, we do dinner with Debbie. I cook yes. at home. Yes. Um, and then what are you guys grateful for right now in life? What are you grateful for? I am grateful for baby cakes. We're grateful for each other. No, but, no, but I said it first. You have oh. to say something else. He can say it too. It's okay. He can say it too. We're, we're, we're grateful for each other. We're grateful for Jojo, our dog. He's Jojo. around here somewhere. Papa, um, mommy wants to show you. We're grateful oh, for friends, family, oh, customers, oh, and, and all these cool? people that have passed through our doors that have become part of our insanity. Oh, and, uh, you know, we're just we're just us we're, we're not changing you know the same people we were if you try to put cheese on your seafood pasta we uh, you uh we're we're not gonna let you I do it. You. um if you if you misbehave or disrespectful to the staff we're gonna Mommy show you the door you. even though we can't show you the door anymore because <laughs> there's outdoor dining right? <laughs> that's not showing um but but no, uh, we, we're, we're grateful for that. I mean, we got guys that are still with us for like 20 some odd years. Yeah. You know, so, so we're grateful. And, 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 and let me tell you, man, it is, it is hard. You know, there, there is ups and downs and all this other stuff going on. But you know, we try. We try, we try, we try. And, and, and of course, we are. We're human. And uh, there's days where we don't want to try no more. Yeah, Damn, man, do you cook? No, <laughs> when, smart man. You guys um, are one of the people that have inspired me um, during this time. I mean, you guys are one of there's, there's been certain people. Your guys' tenacity, and I've been watching you since you've been. You're doing your live every. You're posting every day about what you're cooking and things. There's a certain crew of people that have been inspirational to me, and you guys have been one of the first. Um, Thank you. You gotta last, keep on keeping on, Damon. What? Keep on doing. Yeah, I know. Keep on. Trust me. Like you said, we all hustlers. We're hustlers. That's um, it. And then what? last question. You know, we're in a pandemic. Lots of people aren't working. How can we support you guys right now? How can people watching support you? Um, supporting us. Spread the word. Spread the word. You know, uh, if you want to come by and have an honest plate of food that's yeah. made with love. If with you like terrible ingredients. food, come see us and then spread the word. You know, um, we're small mom and pop. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so spread the word, and obviously by ordering takeout from you guys. Um, yes. Yeah, order if they takeout. want to. Yeah. The food is terrible, but if they can tell everybody to come, it's really nice. Yes, no, the food is amazing. I don't know if she, can say <laughs> she didn't get it, so it's okay. Food is amazing. We always say it's terrible. It's reverse psychology. <laughs> oh, the food is amazing. Always... Low bars. <laughs> um. All right, guys. I want to thank you for taking. Oh, Damon, you. thank you, my love. Um, this is my 119th episode. I've had a myriad mazo, mazo. that have been very important to culture. Many you more. So important. I, um, you, like I said, I keep saying it. You guys make New York what New York is. You are real. You are. You have a fabulousness. Your fabulousness, you know, transcends anything. You guys are real. You guys are authentic. You guys, you know, like I said, you make everyone feel special. It could be a stripper or a huge celebrity and you don't treat either one any different which is the brilliance of you both you guys have a, a huge successful relationship which you want to share your secrets um and you know like you have truly inspired me this time you guys have remained um uh you know above water this whole time and it's been really an inspiration to me so i want to thank you guys we wouldn't be above water with the love of all our uh, guests and people like you that spread the word yeah no I, nothing without you thank you 
Um, I'll post something. Let me know something you want me to post about promoting your place. I'll post it for you for sure. And thank I want, you. I want to thank you guys for being on Legendary Talks. You guys are amazing. Grazie. Ciao, darling. And um, happy holidays. You Buon too. Natale. Guys, thank you. I appreciate it. See you soon. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Grazie. Bye.